Hi everyone, Mike here from Mikey Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the Sony A6400, which at the time of making this video is Sony's latest APS-C sized interchangeable lens camera. But despite it being the latest version, it's still not technically the flagship model. That title goes to the A6500, which is not any more expensive, but it also has IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization. It's a very, very good feature to have, especially for uh, videographers. Um, despite this actually being labeled as a, um, in, uh, as a vlogging camera um, you know it, it really depends on your needs It's a very good feature to have but it's not a complete necessity once again really depends on what you want to do um, but anyway this retails in at around a thousand pounds and that does include the 16 to 50 mil kit lens which is actually a pretty decent lens especially to start off with it's not a bad one at all now if you're looking into getting some other lenses I personally would still recommend getting this one as the price difference of the body only to the, the normal kit lens isn't really that much and it's always good to have that you know little spare backup uh, there is also another option or another kit lens where you get a bit more focal range so that is also a you know a good option to go for but once again really depends on your needs so anyway as for the specs if i just turn it around this way and zoom in i'm just gonna quickly read through some of them so first of all as i've already stated it has an aps-c size sensor which is a really good size to have and the megapixel count is 24.2 the iso range is 100 to 32,000. it can shoot 11 frames per second the face detection uh, autofocus points there is 425 of them which is really good now this is where this camera gets really interesting the real-time eye autofocus now on all the other models you typically have to hold down a button uh, for it to, to distract the eye with this one you're getting that real-time focus so it's, it's always tracking the eye which is it's just absolutely it's a fantastic feature if you if you haven't uh, used a camera with eye autofocus before it's a great feature and the fact that they've actually improved on that that's even better and um, to my knowledge that that's something that the a6500 doesn't have, uh, have I know that the a7 mark 3 and the higher models are getting this update uh, later on in the year but I haven't seen anything uh, about the a6500 I really do hope though that they include that in a firmware update as it's a flagship model the other thing is real-time tracking once again another thing uh, where it just kind of like locks onto a subject and it you know tracks them uh, whilst moving around really really cool uh, silent shooting it's always good and also it has touch features so you can uh, focus and use a shutter just by tapping so anyway that's pretty much it for the features I've waffled on far too much so uh, now I just need to get a knife and let's do the unboxing I do have to say that um, the a6000 was actually one of my first actually no it was my first APS-C size camera in fact it was actually my first uh, interchangeable lens camera and it was one of my favorites I absolutely loved it but I had to sell it to upgrade and you know what I really missed it it would have been a great uh, backup camera so I'm really glad to get my hands on this so the first things to come out of the box are your normal documents. You have your little instruction manual, your warranties, and then like a, just a little leaflet, just telling you about the uh, you know updates, etc. So this is very nicely packed inside. I'm going to leave the camera till last. So we have the power cable. I believe that's the EU one and the UK. Depending on what country you're going to be in, will depend on what power cables you have. The next thing to come out is the little uh, AC adapter. Then we have the battery. If I'm correct, this is the MPFW50. Yep. Now I kind of regret selling all my batteries. I, I give well, I didn't even sell them. I gave them away uh, when I got rid of my A6000s. Uh, so now I've only got one. But yeah, if you do want to get any spare batteries, MPFW50. Um, yeah, they, they don't really last. I think it's about 350 shots, so you may want to get a spare one. We have an Alpha branded strap. That's oh, nice and soft, actually. Then we have a micro USB lead. To be honest, that's quite short. But USB cables are very cheap. We also have an eyepiece cover. And lastly, we have the A6400. Ooh. I 
tell you what, that has a really nice, solid feel to it. Really nice build. Much more of an improvement from the uh, A6000 to what I remember. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. All right, so let's get some of this all set up. First of all, we're gonna put the um, eyepiece attachment. That should just slot on. There we are, so that's the eyepiece attached. You also need an SD card, which isn't included, so make sure you grab one of those if you haven't got one already. So that goes in where the battery stays. And where's, I can't remember where I put the battery. There it is. Now I'm gonna do a little overview of the camera itself so you have a good idea of the button layouts and the little features it has to offer. And we'll start off with the front just in case you know, you're watching and you don't know anything about these types of cameras. So with interchangeable lens cameras, there's normally a release button, which on this one is located on the bottom left of the lens. So if I push it down and then twist anti-clockwise, the lens will pop off. And to reattach, just align the white dots together and then twist clockwise. There we are. And that's also actually brought up to my attention that this doesn't actually include a lens or body cap, which are really good. So if you're transporting them and you just wanna uh, lower down the profile a bit more, um, you can take the lens off, uh, put one of these on, and I know that'll be this one, and then this one will go over the body just to keep them both protected. Um, you can get them really cheap online, so you may want to just get a couple of these uh, if that's what you intend to do. Otherwise, there's no need. Uh, the other thing to mention is there are two types of E-mount lenses. Uh, one is just a normal E-mount, which is designed for APS-C uh, type uh, uh, cameras such as this one. And the other one, even though it's an E-mount, is an FE lens. That's typically for full frame. You can use either one of these types of lenses with this camera. Um, it's just basically the FE is more future proof if you're going to be upgrading or getting a full frame camera uh, because you know with this one you can't utilize the you know the, the full frame sensor because it just simply won't cover it um, but in doing so you're also adding a lot more weight typically the normal E mount lenses are a lot lighter so do bear that in mind now, regardless of what lens you're, you know, you go for, do remember that this has a 1.5 times crop. So, for example, if you're going for a 50 mil, you're going to be getting about 75 mil equivalent. Anyway, back to the uh, the layout of the camera. On this side, we have a little NFC emblem. That's basically a near field communication hotspot. So, if your uh, smartphone or tablet device has NFC and you download the Play Memories mobile app. You can actually, uh, for example, you're viewing an image that you really like and you want to send over to your phone, tap them two together and it will initiate that process. It's a very good feature to have and it's something that I use a lot on my Sony cameras. And just up here you have the uh, record button and it's actually quite nice to see that they've um, you know, got a little like indent where the, where the thumb is just to kind of stop accidental, um, you know, like recording though, you know, the placement isn't exactly great. I personally would have liked to see it here, like with my A7 uh, Mark III. There we are. It's, it's nice and out of the way. You don't really want it near the thumb, but at least there's a bit of an improvement from some of the previous models where it's completely flush um, and there's nothing to kind of separate your thumb. On the other side, we have uh, the uh, like your typical ports, and I really, really like what they've done here. This is like a little sliding tab. Uh, before it's you have to kind of peel it open and it's attached to a little plastic piece of string or whatever it is and it was, it was just a, a pain it always got in the way this keeps the hatch you know completely away from you know the the, the port so a really good feature so thanks Sony for implementing that it's a major improvement so you have your uh, micro USB port this is typically for charging um, you can get an external battery charger if you really want to you charge them externally but otherwise you know it's nice and simple you put it in there and there's also like a little led light that will pop up prompting that it's charging um, etc and just below that is a micro hdmi port followed by a microphone port on the bottom as already shown you've got the battery hatch uh, where you also include your um, you store your sd card and i'll see a tripod receptacle it wouldn't be a camera without one i think it would be very weird if camera didn't have that to be honest um, and then if we go up top so we've got the viewfinder here 
with a little adjustment to the dial. So it's, it's a little bit fiddly to get to, but you know, it, it is doable. Then we have the flash button. And the great thing about this uh, this flash, like I've uh, I've always said with all the previous uh, A6000s, and to be honest, I believe even the uh, RX100 series also has it. There we are. So basically, and this is a feature that I absolutely love on these cameras, because a lot of, um, of digital cameras don't offer this. You can bend the flash backwards, so you can then aim it on the ceiling and bounce the flash just kind of you know like evens out the flash and makes it um, you know not too harsh on the subject absolutely love this feature and if you haven't had this before it will soon become a favorite then you have the menu button followed by the autofocus manual basically you, you can uh, you switch between you know which one you want to control autofocus and manual focus or auto exposure lock and there's a little button to kind of toggle that as well uh, we have a function button which is a really good feature to have it basically um, pops up uh, all these different customizable um, options which you can set yourself so you can easily access things such as white balance or you know flash uh, compensation etc there's there's a lot of things that you can choose from and it's uh, yeah, really really good to have also it uh, acts as a send to smartphone uh, button so if you're viewing a, um, a an image you press that and it will also initiate the process to, to get it over but that is a bit more of a long-winded way than to actually just you know using the NFC option we also have the control wheel where you can uh, go to the drive mode and the timer you can um, toggle between the displays you've got the ISO and um, that looks like the exposure value uh, you've got playback and the uh, also the the delete button which is also a customizable two button yeah so that's for the rear i will go to the actually yeah i will talk about the um the screen so this one the, the major improvement on this which a lot of people have been asking for a long time is a like i think that the reason why they haven't included it in some of the, the higher end models of the a6000 series is because of this eyepiece here so the really low models i think some of the 5000 series has um they don't have an eyepiece like this so the the screen can flip up over but they've done a work around this so it actually extends out and then flips around and the the screen and the eyepiece aren't actually touching. You can see there's a little gap there, which is great. You know, if you're if you're vlogging, the only thing is if you're planning on getting a microphone, I wouldn't recommend getting one that goes on the camera, and I'm going to show you why. So this is one that I use uh, with a lot of my cameras. I even use the A6000. There we are. So put that on. If I then extend the uh, the screen. It's just in the way. You can't really see much, it's a little bit pointless. So that's why you want to utilize the microphone port that's on the side of the camera. Now Sony do have their own, I think it's like a mini uh, XLR phone kit, but that's about, I think that's how you say it. Um, that's about 500 pounds, which is a little bit overkill. And what it does is uh, there's like a little bracket and you've got the microphone to the side. Um, and it's, you know, I'm sure it's very good, but it's also very expensive, but there's there's other workarounds you can do. But either way, if you're if you're planning on using the tiltable, well, 180 degree tilt screen, just set up a, a microphone elsewhere. At least you have that option. So now we'll continue from up top. We've got the on off switch. We have a customizable one button, and then we have the, the mode dial. So we have auto, program auto, Aperture priority, shutter priority, manual, memory recall. So this um, is basically you can set a whole variety of settings and you basically save it and then you can choose which profile you want for easy access. You have movie mode. So we have S and Q, that means slow and quick mode. Panoramic, Ooh, scene, and back to auto. And this little uh, wheel here is basically just another like control wheel so for example you know navigating through the aperture or shutter really quickly and for the final part of the video i'm just going to show you around the menu i'm not going to go through everything just so you have a good idea of the user interface which i personally think is very well laid out they haven't really changed much over the years and that's because it works very well and i personally absolutely love it um so the one 
main thing that they have added, not in this camera in particular, they, they've had them on, on several of the previous models, but uh, it's still a tab I want to mention, is the My Menu setting. And that allows you to add whatever settings you want, so it's very easy to access. So if you're noticing you're using certain settings over the others and you don't want to go through all these different sub-menus, then you can just add them on your menu settings for quick access. But, uh, but as a whole, you know, you've got the main tabs here. So for the, uh, for example, the first one is mainly the photo quality and general photo settings. If you go to the next one, you've got the movie quality and settings such as, you know, the autofocus when you're in, in movie mode. Then you've got uh, the network, so, you know, sending pictures to your phone, etc., or viewing on TV. Um, you've got playback options such as protect, rotate, d delete, and rate. So, you know, rating the photos is, is something that a lot of people will find handy. And then you have the normal setup. So, um, if I go to page five in the, in the sub menu of this one, I can find the uh, format option to format my card. Once you've had a little play around, you know, you, you will be able to find things easier. Um, so, you know, for example, here I can change to raw format, change the, um, you know, if I was shooting in, in JPEG, the, the overall quality or uh, resolution, shall I say, you can change the aspect ratio, three by two, 16 by nine, one by one. And if I skip a couple of pages, I can then uh, access the, you know, the focus modes. But you know, this, this isn't just where you can find the settings, you can actually customize uh, some buttons to quickly access to them. So for example, I'm not sure what uh, custom button one is, but if I click that, okay, so that's the focus mode. So nice, quick, um, you know, uh, access to focus mode. But once again, you can literally set it to however you want. If I click the function button, I can have access to all these. And once again, these are all customizable as well. At the moment I have selected drive mode. I've got the focus mode, focus area, exposure comp, ISO, metering. Now I will probably re-lay out these so um, that they match my A7 Mark III because um, that's a little bit all over the place. But that's that's the whole point of, uh, of these function buttons and customizer buttons. You can literally tailor the camera to how you want it. It's a it's a very good system and it works. You know, I, I absolutely loved my A6000 when I had it and this has just improved greatly. Um, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, the autofocus, the speed of it, um, you know, the, the little functions. I mean, you know, this is the first um, one out of the A6000 series that has a uh, 180 degree screen. Yeah, it's, you know, it's subtle touches like that and other improvements that, um, that make these cameras, you know, get better and better. And Sony really don't skimp out on their technology and features. Um, yeah, just great bit of kit really. And that's it for the video. I really do hope that this unboxing and overview has given you a better understanding of what to expect from the camera. Of course, it's not a product of review, uh, just uh, to basically a bit more of a, like to give you an insight of what to expect. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you on my next video.